Welcome back to my channel and episode 4 of Getting in Shape, a series where I cut down all of my nails and take you with me weekly on my journey back to my long almond shaped nails. In this week's episode, I'll be taking you through a dip manicure, so I'm going to be showing you my process from beginning to end. On my first layer, I just do a small strip down the middle of my nail. I'm starting in the middle of my nail where my apex would be at the highest. I do this to build, um, to help build that apex and get that nice curve when you look at it from the side profile view. I'm using some Zooty colors here. So the darker one is called Acid Trip. Um, and then for my ring and middle fingers, I'm doing a layer of Soplar, uh, which is this nice uh, shimmery white. Um, and then I'm going to top that um, with Private Spot, which is a flaky um, iridescent uh, powder. And I'm doing a, a base layer of white first because um, I want it to be more opaque. So here I'm uh, brushing off that excess powder. So after each dip, when the base is no longer sticky, you want to make sure that you brush off that excess powder really well. Uh, getting powder on your base brush when you apply the next um, layer can contaminate your base liquid, making it um, thick and goopy. Uh, some brands liquids may be more susceptible to contamination, but I like to make sure that I clean my nails really well of loose powders as well as my uh, base brush. You'll, I'm kind of doing this off camera, but I'm um, after I put base onto my fingers or onto my nails before I put it back in the bottle I'm brushing it on a paper towel um, and I do this again to avoid that contamination and keep my base from getting sticky or uh, goopy. On the second coat I'm taking the base liquid back to my cuticle. I've actually started doing my second dip three-fourths to the cuticle lately instead of all the way back so I've been actually liking that more um, so since I'm doing a total of four dips if you count that little strip as the first dip. Um, so when I do take it back to the cuticle I don't start right away at the cuticle line. Instead I place the brush about three-fourths of the way there uh, uh, spread out the brush and then slowly push it back until about a hairline away from the cuticle. You don't want your base liquid getting on your cuticle or any part of your skin. Some people do take a toothbrush or uh, a cuticle tool to clean around the cuticle, but I find this brush fanning and pushback is more effective for me in getting nice cuticle lines. Um, I do encourage you to try it both ways to see what works best for you. After every dip layer, make sure you are brushing away any excess powder. I may not be showing that here on camera, but it's so important that you don't forget to do that. Uh, on these uh, these next dips, so this this is my third and uh, this is my third dip right now, and then on my fourth dip, the application is much of the same. So I'm going to just speed through this. I'm going to speed it up, and I'm just going to let you watch me dip for a little bit. With Private Spot, this powder has flakes, and with flakes or chunky glitters, I like to pat them down with my finger, and then I take a wooden cuticle pusher um, to run along the edges of my nail so I don't get any shards or flakes or glitter sticking out of the sides. If there are some of that sticking out from the free edges of my nail, I leave those alone because I can file those even. Thank you. 
So I want to show you my little nail vacuum that I have. This is pretty loud when it's turned on, but I love using it for brushing off that excess powder, especially when I'm working with flaky dips or um, dips that have a lot of shimmer. The ones, I mean, you know the ones, the ones that fly everywhere when you're using them. Uh, it's great because it just sucks that powder and the flakes and the, and the shimmer and all that stuff that's in the air into the filter that you can remove and then shake out later into the trash can. The last step before I activate is to um, encapsulate uh, with clear. Sometimes I don't do this step when I'm using shimmers, but I just want to make sure that I don't buff any of this pretty shimmer that's an acid trip, so I'm encapsulating all of my nails. You can apply your clear one of two ways. Um, you can take a spoon to pour the clear over your nail like I'm doing here. Um, or you can dip straight into the clear, which I feel like is faster, um, but you know, sometimes you might not want to um, you know, contaminate your clear with glitters that you might, you might have on your finger. So sometimes the pour over method is, is nice to keep your clear um, free of that extra um, stuff. <laughs> The clear that I'm using is from All Powdered Up. There are so many companies right now that have a really good clear, and All Powdered Up is just one that I love. Um, I did do a couple videos um, comparing multiple brands' um, clear powders, so I'll link that. I'll link those two videos in my description below, so you can check out, um, you know, that comparison. When I brush off my clear, I actually like to take a stiffer brush to clean excess powder off. This really helps to get in the grooves and dusts it off really well. Um, Cause sometimes what I found is if you have some extra clear powder left on your nail, when you activate um, and top coat, you, you might find that it's not as clear as you would want it to be. It might have some cloudiness. So using a stiff brush really, you know, gets all of that powder off of your nail. Next step is activator that you apply to all of your nails. Make sure you're capping the tip of your nails um, as well. Um, you'll see that I'm doing the lighter versions or the lighter nails first and then going in with the darker ones. It's just in case the darker ones um, stain my brush because sometimes some colors are really pigmented and they might stain um, or some of that color go comes off into um, the, the brush, the activator brush. So I like to do the, the lighter colors first. So after I put on the activator, I had waited about two minutes for that activator to harden the dip um, before I went in to um, file and buff my nails. 
and I, I, you can see this vacuum again. I like to file over my vacuum so it can suck up all that dust that comes from filing and buffing. Um, when I file with the dip on, I use the same process as I do when I'm filing my natural nails or nails with builder gel on. So I'm going to actually speed through this part, but you can dive a little deeper with my previous videos um, um, in the series. Uh, where I do talk about shaping as well as a whole video I did previously on shaping nails to coffin and almond shape. So I'll link those videos um, again in the description below so you can check those out. After filing and buffing, I go off to rinse my hands with just plain water, no soap, before coming back to apply some activator. After this coat of activator, I usually wait about three minutes and I do set, an, uh, set myself a timer on my phone just to make sure my timing is accurate before I start top coating. Once my three minutes are up, I take a lint-free wipe to clean off any activator that might still be left over on my nails. Um, make sure you're also cleaning the tips as well. As with the base liquid, you want to make sure you're cleaning your top coat brush before putting it back into its bottle so you don't contaminate the liquid with activator. Instead of a paper towel here, I like using a coffee filter. So a coffee filter is lint free, so I don't risk getting any lint specks in my top coat for, um, so that I can get a nice smooth shiny finish on my, on my nails. Um, on this first coat of top coat, um, you want to make sure you have a good amount of liquid on the brush. Uh, top coat brushes can harden if it comes into contact with activator, so you want to have a good layer of the liquid between the brush and your nail to help protect that. After your first round of top coat, you can go back in immediately with your second coat. Uh, when the top coat is starting to look a little crinkly, that's when you know it's time for the second coat.
Let that top coat dry for about two to three minutes. And uh, once it's dry, I like to finish off all of my manis with some cuticle oil uh, from Candy Skincare to soothe and hydrate my cuticles. Um, Cause after a mani, you've been filing and buffing, you've been drying it out. So it needs a little TLC. Uh, thanks for watching this video and I hope you stay tuned to the next episode where I will be talking peel base. Until next time guys, bye!